we'd like to welcome Rachel McCormack, uh, a regular contributor to the BBC on matters of food and whiskey, as well as the author of Chasing the Dram, Finding the Spirit of Whiskey. She's known for pushing the envelope when it comes to drinking whiskey in different contexts, especially paired with excellent food. She may offer us a new perspective on what to do with our lockdown whiskies. So hi, Rachel. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, hi, hi like Sam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it looks like you're very close to being outside, but uh, not quite out there just now. No, I'm, it's just a wee bit too cold, so I'm kind of sitting beside a very big window, looking longingly at the table, thinking that I really want to be sitting out there, but it's not warm enough. Ah, Shay. Well, I guess that's uh, the less temptation we have to go outside, the better just now. Yes, pretty much. So, not a lot you can do. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked... Oh, little pause. So we've talked a bit about uh, the whiskies that Struan and I would like to uh, be locked in with. Um, and mm -hmm. I wonder if there's uh, a particular bottle of whiskey that you'd most want to spend your time with in a lockdown. Did you manage to grab a particular bottle before we all got stuck inside? Do you know, I didn't. Um, but I think I would probably like the Glen Scotia Victoriana. Just oh. for no other reason than... If you're going to be inside, you want something that's a bit unusual. Like, I love Lagavulin, I love Aran whiskey, I love Speyside whiskey, but it's not necessarily the Victoria, um, Glen Scotia Victorian is my absolute favourite, but it's just, it's a quite an unusual tasting whiskey because mm. it's got that sort of almost sulfury Campbelltown taste, slightly peaty, and it's just, it's also, it's the one that I have when I go to the pot still in Glasgow with my friends. So for me as well, drinking Glen Scotia Victoriana is sitting around with my friends in the pub, which I would like to do again, hopefully before Christmas. And so that's the one I would pick. I would pick Glen Scotia Victoriana. I can see that. Yeah, I've, uh, I've had it a couple of times myself and it always seems to offer up something a little bit new on each exploration. So even though you'd be coming back to it again and again, you're never going to be coming back to the same whiskey twice. Absolutely. That, you know, that is another thing. But I think also with that, what you've got is it depends, you know, whiskey can change its taste depending on what you've just eaten or what time of the day it is. Oh, for sure. Or, you know, it, I mean, not massively, but you can, you, you can notice different, different notes in a whiskey depending on, on what's been the taste in your mouth beforehand. Like if you are having a curry, you find that the whiskey kind of softens the curry and, and the curry softens the whiskey because of the way both alcohol and a uh, chili affect your trigeminal nerve you find that, that actually curry and whiskey kind of soften each other. That's interesting. Yeah, I've, I've sort of got used to the idea that maybe you have curry with a beer or something like that, but mm -hmm. I've never got up the nerve to have a whiskey and a curry at the same time. It's a really big, it's, a, it's actually a really common thing to do in India. I remember years ago being in the South Indian restaurant in London and a friend, I was with a friend of mine from North India and these two guys walked in and they ordered a huge big plate of lamb chops and a bottle of Johnny Walker and then two glasses with ice and she just, just laughed and she went, you know, they are here to do business. That is how you do business in South India. Lamb chops and Johnny Walker whiskey with glasses with ice and that's it. So I think, you know, for Indians it's quite common and actually I can see why with the taste. That actually sounds fantastic. And true also, I guess, uh, in China where more whiskey is being drunk, that uh, you tend to drink your strong spirits with food, sort of almost like mm -hmm. as little punctuations throughout the meal. So this can yes. be advice all over the world that whiskey and food, they go pretty well. They do. Now, this is actually something that you have um, spent quite a bit of time on. Uh, you're very much into uh, making sure that we're all eating well and we're being just a little bit more experimental with the kind of things that we eat and maybe the pairings we do with whiskey. Um, so are there any interesting combinations, uh, maybe if you're not going for the curry, but other things that we could have with a whiskey? Um, and maybe I should rephrase the question. Um, yeah, so we all, we all went on a big shop before uh, we got locked in. Um, and we all sort of went for particular items that were going to last a little bit longer. So for those people who have uh, some things in their store cupboard, are there any interesting combinations of whiskey you think you might be able to find among the lockdown stores? Well, if people have 
Um, blue cheese. Blue cheese and a peated whiskey is a really, really nice combination. And if they have got any nuts, if there's like hazelnuts, almonds, walnuts, anything like that, um, if they're slightly salted, I would even just, what I would do with those nuts is I would put them in a dry frying pan and roast them slightly with some salt and then have like a Speyside whiskey or a sherry cask finished whiskey, you know, your kind of Macallan, your Aberlowers, those kind of, those kind of whiskies, really, really nice with, with nuts. And peated whiskey is fabulous with blue cheese. That sounds no, those, and those are really simple things. Hmm. And uh, possibility of incorporating whiskey into some recipes for cooking? Well, if you're going to do that, the basic thing is, is to work out what whiskey goes well with what food. And also, again, it's, you know, how much you are willing to spend. Because if you're standing there with your best whiskey and toning it into a soup and crying, then it's probably not the best <laughs> thing to do. I, From for experience. example, I make tomato sauce quite often with whiskey, but I very much use a kind of soft blend Peated whiskey and tomatoes don't don't seem to go very well at all. Mm. Um, so if you're basically if you're making a tomato sauce and you're just having like your onions and your garlic and you're frying them down, once you before you add in the tomato your tin of tomatoes, just add in some whiskey. Mm. I mean, not an awful lot, just probably like a measure. Um, it's just instead of using wine, it's the same if you're making any kind of bolognese sauce or any kind of mince. Same kind of thing, just add in a bit of whiskey. Obviously, whiskey goes really, really well with cream. Now, one of the things, at least in Scotland, if you are buying once a week, you should still be able to get quite. You should be able. You should still be able to get cream. Also, to be honest, the supermarkets are pretty full. So, if you get like a double, if you buy double cream and then you whip up double cream and you add a bit of orange marmalade to it, and if you can get it some lemon, but mm. if you can't get the lemon, it's not a big deal. And then add just a couple of uh, tablespoonfuls of whiskey. And that's called the Caledonia cream, and it's a fabulous adult dessert. And the thing with that that I always find is interesting is that the whiskey that you like in the glass isn't necessarily the whiskey that you like that is your favourite in the Caledonia cream. But with Caledonia cream, I wouldn't say there is a whiskey that goes better in, in the cream than another one. It's just that is really personal, but mm -hmm. it can be different from the one you like in the glass. So if you are very bored, and in your house with cream and marmalade and whiskey and it's evening time and you want to have a wee experiment, I would whip up the cream, add some orange marmalade, put them into, into wee dishes and then just add different whiskies in and see what you like. Hmm, that sounds great. Especially also the point that maybe different whiskies react differently and whiskies that maybe uh, you like in the glass, you don't like in other forms. But then conversely, if you're here in your house with a whiskey that maybe isn't your favorite try experimenting with it and uh, you might find that it has a new lease on life yeah and i mean i think you'd be surprised and also what you get so what you get when you put when you put whiskey in food at the very beginning when you're saying when you're making in your tomato sauce your bolognese and you're frying your onions mm. and you're adding whiskey you don't get a really strong sense of whiskey what you get is a strong sense of something mm that an extra deeper taste that you can't quite put your finger on. And it's not the same as using red wine. It does give you a slightly deeper taste. But again, that isn't, I wouldn't use my really good whiskey for that because I would, if I was going to do that, if you've got like a stock, even if you've just got a chicken stock that you're just drinking a really thin soup, add in like a, a soup spoon of whiskey. Don't add in two. Again, the other problem I think when people start putting whiskey in food is they start trying to make cocktails mm. and it doesn't work. You really less is more. If you're not sure, add it in teaspoonful by teaspoonful until you have enough. And you know, one teaspoonful it can go from this is a fabulous taste to this is just a bad drink. And it's and you really want to be careful with not using too much. Yeah. So it feels like, um, especially if we people uh, take you up on your advice, that maybe a few habits are going to be changing in the kitchen. Um, are there any other maybe sort of habits that you could see will change after all of this has blown over? What do you mean in terms of what, what will change? I mean, I, I, I suppose I think the, the big thing is, is I do think people have to be, hold on a second. One of the biggest things I think people have to be careful of mm. is they have to be really careful of the, their alcohol consumption during lockdown. Mm. And we all make jokes about it, but genuinely, you need to cook Annie. You need to put a lid on it. 
it can get out of hand really easily. You know, I've seen this people joking about wine o'clock now being four o'clock, you know, whiskey tastings at three o'clock in the afternoon. And you know what? That's fine on a Saturday or a Sunday, but keep that to the weekend. Remember, you still have a weekend, especially if you don't have children. I think it can all start bleeding into one. And yeah, there are videos joking about people drinking wine at seven o'clock in the morning, but it is not a good road to go down. And I think you, maybe what you should be doing is not, you know, that whiskey that you've been saving for a good occasion, this is the occasion. And you have one and you sit down and you savour it and you really enjoy it. Mm. And that's what you do. You know, your lockdown whiskey is a whiskey that you are saving for a good occasion and you're not just wiring in and just getting through it. You're drinking it really slowly and really savouring it. I think that's, that's good advice, especially sort of sticking to some kind of routine even while um while you're kind of in the same place every day impose a little bit of structure and uh you won't end up doing anything that you might regret after i just i do i mean i, I do just think you can have you know if, make yourself a nice cocktail if you've got some stuff if you've got stuff that you've not used that's in your drinks cabinet look online and see if there's things that you can make with them and make one but make one at six o'clock that you know that's what you do you have a before dinner cocktail and that's you done because it just it can descend into it can descend into every night this friday night because all the days are the same so the um there is a chance that uh, some of the traditional thoughts on whiskey as in whiskey as medicine might come up but probably best to push those aside again quite quickly right well, I think the thing is, on a, you know, on a serious point, you know, whiskey was distilled to be medicine. Distillation became, became about because of people looking for a way to, to, to strengthen herbs for medication. And a lot of the time when you look at, at old stories in the 19th century about whiskey being medication and when people were ill, they drank whiskey. And if they were still ill, they drank more whiskey. It was because they had nothing else. You know, they had no pharmaceuticals. They couldn't afford a doctor. So whiskey as medicine was was fine in, in the old days. And there's always a joke about if you've got a cold, um, you you go to bed with a bottle of whiskey and a bowler hat and you put the bowler hat at the bottom of your bed and you drink whiskey and you stop drinking when you can see two bowler hats because you're cured. <laughs> it's a good joke, but I wouldn't do it. Mm. I mean, do you have a bowler hat there with you? No, I don't. But I figured that it was a, because it was an old enough joke. I thought, well, I've got a hat or I can put a scarf and then I can see double the scarves. But, you know, it's not it's I mean, I, I, I like that as a joke. It makes me laugh. But I think it you know, really is something that right, mm. especially right now, we shouldn't do because this, you know, we could we our lives could be very different for quite a while. And I think those of us who are lucky enough to not have to be incredibly concerned about finances still have to take care of our medical of our mental health mm -hmm. yeah absolutely right um though we can still maybe put in a good word for the whiskey toddy um mostly because of uh, i guess the lemon and the ginger and the spices you might put in it and then the whiskey sort of helps to bring those all together well i mean you can have a couple but again it's just don't don't go crazy now, now is really not the time to go crazy. As some, someone was saying, when this is all over, Scotland is either going to be so traumatised, everybody's going to be only want to do video conferences, or we are going to have the biggest party in Scottish history. And I think we're going to do the second one. I agree. And I think that I think every country in the world will do the second one. I think every country will have the biggest party that they've had in their history. And I think that was right and good. And I think until then, you have to keep yourself as happy as possible and being careful and drinking and drinking the good stuff in your house and drinking mm -hmm. it in small amounts. Absolutely. And maybe saving one particular bottle of the good stuff for the party when it's over. No, I think yeah. you just buy another one. Oh, just buy <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I think, I think once you can get out, just buy another one. Mm. See, one thing that um, whiskey definitely has going for it is uh, if you put a freeze on something somewhere, well, the whiskey is still quietly sitting in a warehouse and it's still doing the maturation that it's so famous for. So uh, even if uh, the warehouses aren't moving the whiskey around now, doesn't mean that it's not getting better waiting for the day it can be let out again. Exactly. So it's not, I mean, it is one of those, it is the one, one of the products that there is no danger of it running out. So this is why I think you open the good stuff in your house because you can buy more as soon as you, 
as soon as deliveries are back on board, as soon as sales are back on board, you can buy anything. You'll be able to buy anything that you want. Hmm. Wonderful. 